Welcome back, guys. Okay, PGSM, we're moving on. Act 16. This episode, we see a rift between Ami and Naru, and I think this demonstrates the possible jealousy uh, between Usagi's new friends and her old friends. I really like that they touched on that. I thought that was a really, I thought it was a really good way that they presented it. Um, Ami's really hard on him, herself in this episode, and we also see Ray kind of being more herself and giving Ami the kind of wake up call that she needs. And I think this episode also really kind of shows them being more connected and not so separated, starting to become better friends. So that's just my interpretation of it. And then on the flip of it, there's this one point on this episode where uh, Usagi is going over to see Mamoru. And she sees him with another woman. It's like, oh, and the looks on each other's faces. And it's just, who? Oh, excuse me while I hyperventilate and freak out. Because it was a freak out moment. Okay. <laughs> and then we're moving on to Act 17. And we find out that Mamoru has a girlfriend. Whew. And Yusagi definitely was eating her feelings. As I think. That's a normal reaction. <laughs> and every time they did the flashback to her seeing him and, and him seeing her and oh, the looks on their faces, it was just so much unsaid, unspoken words. It was just, oh, it was hard, y'all, really. <laughs> I swear it was like a stab to the heart every time she just thought about it. It was like, and she just eats some more. It's like, Ooh, okay. And then on the other, and then on another part of this episode, Ray and Monaco started bonding over a dog, a lost dog. Uh, so that was cute. It was a brief bonding moment. And then uh, you see Usagi run into Mamoru with his girlfriend again, and it's just again the whole just it was it just tense, very tense moment. Okay. <laughs> and then later the girlfriend. Uh, her name is Hina, by the way, uh, asked Mamoru if the handkerchief um, that he has that is from Yasagi is important. Ah, another very tense moment. <laughs> and we also see, um, I, I noticed on this episode with Venus, she has a different, she has a really different um, transformation sequence than the rest of them, I think which kind of sets her apart a little bit. And again, we kind of, it drives the point home in this episode that she's very serious and no nonsense. Then we go to Act 18, and I do love it because Ray ended up giving a real tongue lashing to Mina, which was so great, and it was just so reminiscent of their their fiery, you know, friendship that they have and just you know she was just going right at it and you know then they would then they were competing over that dog and dog food and the name for the dog and it was like this whole standoff thing they're just so obstinate those two but it, it was fun to watch and then you see you know Mina and Ray eventually starting to work together but then it goes kind of right back to the strife because um, Mina was like, don't leave Usagi alone, not even for a minute. Consider it a direct order from your princess. Ooh, laying the smackdown much. And then um, I just feel like there's so much like subtext in PGSM. There's like, you always have to like read between the lines almost. Um, but yeah, that whole Mamoru having a serious girlfriend thing is just like, do not want, okay? So Act 19 is funny because we finally see a little bit of carefree Mina that we know uh, when she gives Artemis the fake chocolates. That was funny. Um, romantic, uh, I'm sorry, poor Motoki and his not-so-romantic Valentine's Day. Oh, he was just so overly dramatically depressed in this episode. And then he got a scarf from Mako that wasn't for him, but she just had it, so she gave it to him. And man, you would have thought he won the lottery. He was so over the moon about that. It was just like, oh my god. It was just so hysterical. 
And then this episode's pretty cute because there's this little girl that is in love with this little boy and she asks, Isagi to help her win his heart because he is in love with someone else and then we find out that that someone else is Mamori's, Mamoro's girlfriend <clears throat> okay so they all Mamoro and his girlfriend and Isagi because Isagi's like kind of like babysitting this kid and then like she's and then they all kind of go on this, like, outing all together. The little boy, the little girl, Yusagi, and uh, Mamoru and his girlfriend. And it's just so crazy. Just them being in such close proximity. It was so awkward. It was just like, no! It was crazy. It was great, though, at the same time. And it was so funny because the little girl was like, I must not lose to that woman talking about Mamoru's girlfriend. It was just like... Ooh, that's right. Pay attention, Yusagi. That girl's got the right idea. <laughs> the, her, the little girl, Hikari, just was really driving home that point to Yusagi. Never give up, you see. <laughs> and then, of course, they all have, you know, uh, Mamoru and Yusagi have to transform transform at one point. <clears throat> and um, Sailor Moon confesses her undying love to Tuxedo Mask. And Tux says, not to give up. And I freaked out. Oh my god, I freaked out. I fangirled out so much right there. And, uh, but then, like, when he walks away, because he says, give it time. And then when he walks away, he's all like, all I can ever do is save her. And I was just a basket case. And I was like, oh my god, this is so intense. Ooh, so act 20. Um, yeah, Ray comes to Venus, uh, Venus's, uh, rescue against Venus's wishes. Um, and at this point, of course, they, they, they believe that Venus is the princess and Venus has said, I am the princess and she is not the princess, even though she is technically a princess in her own right. She is not the princess. Um, this episode is hard because then we find out that Mamo... And Memo and his girlfriend, they are engaged. It's like, ah, no. It was killing me at that point. Like, seriously, I was freaking out. <laughs> at this point, it seemed like a kind of struggle of tug of war between Ray and Mina of who was really the leader of the senshi. Um, I know when the kids and Mamo's, like, double date, happened um it was just too cute uh when I just loved it when they held hands they look like a little family because they all like held hands together it was so cute um then you know Hino shows up and it's like go away because that's how Yusagi found out that he's engaged it's just like oh gee <laughs> just rip my heart out huh and probably the one of the biggest moments in Act 20 is when Mako finds out who Tuxedo Mask really is. Mm. Moving on to Act 21. And let me tell you, Mako knocked Tux the F out. <laughs> There's that Jupiter rage. <laughs> And speaking of Mako, it's funny because Matoki is, like, so head over heels with, like, anybody that gives him the time of day. So he's, like, all over her because she gave him that scarf. And it's such a role reversal because she was, he was always the nonchalant one and she was always the, ah, and it's, like, so reversed in PGSM. And I gotta say, there was this one moment in Act 21, uh... <laughs> Between uh, Coon's Night and Queen Barrel. <laughs> um, Queen Barrel, uh, I'm sorry, um, Coon's Night is ballsy because he tells Queen Barrel all she needs to do is think about how she will thank him. <laughs> and I swear, the way he said it, and she's all, I can't think of anything with a smirk on her face. And I was like, wait a minute, hold up. Hold up. It was that an innuendo? Um, the dark side just got a little dirty. 
And speaking of dirty, this was the episode also where Amy became on the dark. She went to the dark side, but I have to say she was kind of kind of awesome with her dark powers. <laughs> Because Act 22, um, and it's just like this one point where Kunzite was telling Mercury she's receiving her powers from Satan himself. I wasn't sure if that was a translation thing, but I was like, wow, we're getting right to the point. Um, I feel like at one point Mercury kind of took over for Zoicite in the Dark Kingdom. Um, and it's kind of funny. I guess I thought that about Mercury because, I mean, come on, they always kind of paired Zoicite with Mercury in any kind of pairings that you've ever heard or seen, even in the art book. So um, I guess I kind of maybe made that connection. Um, with the Mamo and the fiance thing, you get a little more insight to that on this episode. And basically... Mamo is, gave his word to Hina's father, um, and Hina's father is Mamo's benefactor. Um, but yeah, still do not want. And speaking of do not want, on to Act 23, because there was this moment where Zoisite comes to Mamoro. He, like, I guess teleports to Mamoro in a way, or since it's, it's a vision or something. And, you know, Zoisite is trying to you know, tell Mamoru about his past. And he's like, there was a time I once called you Master and Demian. And it's just like, oh, I love that. And then, of course, here comes Hina interrupting. It's like, girl, you are not about this life. Bye. Go away. So moving on to, a, I guess, a, a happier note in this episode, um, it still was always funny that Ray didn't like to sing, but then it's really funny because Ray does sing in this episode, and that, ironically enough, awakens her powers. So see, yet she still doesn't like karaoke. Nope. Now we move on to Act 24, where you kind of start to realize that not all four of the generals want to reawaken their master's memories, or Endymion's, Mamoro's memories. Um, you further, again, realize what a spaz Matoki is in this episode. Um, you know, Zoisite is going through a lot of trouble to try to reawaken Mamoru's memories, and it annoyed me on this episode because Mamo just didn't, he was really like, no, I don't want to know, forget it, I don't want to know, and it's like, dude, he's going through a lot of trouble, the least you could do is listen, you know, like, seriously. Um, Kunzite really has an axe to grind. Um, you really see that in this episode. Um, he's just pretty much just a jerk. Like, really angry. Anger issues, indeed. Um, you know, Mako's really going back and forth between the whole Usa Mamo thing, but she was like, stay away from her. And, um, I did hate it because, like, they got in, they had their a battle and um, Sailor Moon was looking for Mamo, but she's in pain. She can barely walk. She's going to look for Mamo, and Tux doesn't tell her that, hey, I'm Mamo. But then he calls her a baka, and she totally figures it out. And it was just like, oh my god, freak out moment, yay! <laughs> and then Act 25 happened. And it's like, okay, so you realize that Kunzite blames Indy for what happened to them in their past lives, and Zoe Sight blames the princess for what happened to them. And then Hina finds the handkerchief again, and she goes, even if you don't, even if you don't love her, you have to marry, oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't her, it was Matoki, because Mamora went to Matoki, and he's like, even if you don't love her, you have to marry her, because she's your daughter, uh, the daughter of your benefactor. And he's in a turtle suit while he's telling Mamoru this. It's like, come on, Mamoru. Don't listen to the guy in the turtle suit, okay? <laughs> and then Hina really lost my respect because she was like, even if you hate me, stay with me, Mamoru. Deadpan face, indeed. I was just like, oh... No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, and then Mammal, he sa or Tuck saved Sailor Moon, and he told her, I can't return your feelings. Ugh. 
Mm, okay, I'm gonna wrap this up at 25. I'm about to go do. <laughs> Pick up the next video at 26. So come on back, y'all. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like it, subscribe. Until next time.